Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today's video is part two of my Quad Cortex series. Um, I'm going to be showing how to capture hardware with the assistance of your DAW. So uh, just give you an audio sample real quick. This is the plugin chain that I built with the hardware, and then I'll turn off the plugins and you can hear the hardware uh, by itself. So check it out. Without. So uh, you can hear how the <laughs> like the difference that all of this makes. So um, when I'm capturing hardware, I like to use my DAW to help kind of enhance the uh, tones and get me closer to what I consider a, a finished sound. So we're going to go through that today. All right. Here is the game plan. Uh, we are looking at the uh, signal routing as far as the perspective of your audio interface. So this is all the inputs and outputs. Uh, to do all of this, you're going to need a four input, four output um, sound card. You can, if you only have a two in, two out, you can kind of skip one of these steps. You can either skip the uh, pre effects or the post effects. Um, I would say skip the pre effects. Whatever you want to do is fine though. Um, <clears throat> but for this video, I'm going to be going over this as uh, four ins and four outs. So yeah, feel free to pause and read all that, uh, but I'll go through it now. Um, you plug your guitar into the high Z of your DAW. We're going to record some guitar loops. Uh, the reason to do that is so that you have kind of like a hands free, uh, your hands are free so that you can mess around with your plugins and your hardware, um, while listening to these loops, uh, playing guitar riffs for you. So you can kind of listen to the tone and kind of react to it uh, a lot quicker and easier when you've got the loops playing and you can, uh, you know, mess with the stuff, uh, in front of you. All right. So the loops go into the return one of the quad cortex. That's where, when you're doing, uh, the neural capture process return one is where they tell you to plug in your guitar so that's where we're plugging in the uh the loops so we go out of the send one of the quad cortex into our daw and that's where we do our pre uh hardware effects so stuff like eq um overdrives you know anything you want to kind of what you would imagine you would put first in your signal chain um, and then that goes into the hardware, obviously, uh, today we are going to be, uh, modeling a Vesta, uh, from KSR. This is an awesome guitar preamp. Um, that is going to be going from the, you know, well, the signal rather goes out of the hardware into the DAW for stage two, like uh, post processing. This is going to be stuff like, um, you know, saturators, more EQ, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but then that leaves the, uh, the audio interface and goes into, uh, input one of the quad cortex where the capture happens. And then we're going to send that back out to our DAW so we can, uh, listen to it with the impulse response here at this point in the, uh, signal chain. So that way we're not capturing the, uh, the impulse response and we also get to listen to it while we're sitting on the uh the neural capture you know page like when it's like ready to capture the start capture screen uh because as you know that doesn't have an ir and it kind of sounds you know you can't really sh tone shape without the ir you know what i mean even if you don't want to capture it you still need to hear it with the ir in order to sit there and you know mess with plugins mess with the dials on the uh hardware and you know do your thing properly so that's the point of sending it back into your uh daw again so you can do the ir and then listen to that out of your uh monitors so uh a little visual aid hopefully this helps if none of that made sense yet uh the guitar goes into the high z we record some loops uh then we send those loops into return one of the quad cortex uh, and then we send the send one output into the high Z input of our, uh, 
our sound card. Uh, you can use the capture route, but I use uh, send one out because I have a preset that's built that allows you to leave all of your wiring, all of your cables hooked up exactly as they are when you're in capture, you know, mode. Uh, I have a preset that works with your wiring just like that. And it has to do with the fact that the capture signal also gets sent out of uh, quad cortex send one. Uh, and it's the exact same signal. So you're good to go with uh, sending send one into your high Z. All right. So this goes into your DAW uh, where we do our equalization. You know, this is pre hardware. So, uh, you know, if you want to do any kind of equalizing, any kind of boost pedals, you know, overdrives, whatever, uh, then that is sent into the actual hardware. Um, depends on the hardware, but uh, if you're going to do amplifiers, stuff like that, certain pedals, I would suggest using a uh, reamp box. So this is uh, sending a line level into, you know, out the line levels coming out of the sound card. And then that goes into the reamp box. And then the reamp sends the high Z signal into the input of your hardware. Uh, this sounds better for especially amplifiers, but a lot of pedals too. So uh, if you're doing this method, I strongly suggest getting a reamp uh, box for this. All right. So the output of your hardware goes into one of the line inputs of your uh, audio interface, which then goes back into the DAW for the second stage of plug-in stuff. Uh, this is like saturators, exciters, uh, more EQ, um, and uh, if you have any power amp sims, uh, those are two free ones you can check out. Uh, these are helpful, especially for preamp uh, pedals when you want them to sound like a full-on amplifier. All right. So once you're done making your signal sound awesome, uh, you send that into input one of the quad cortex. And that is where the quad cortex will do its magic and create a capture. Uh, from there, we want to send the signal back out of the quad cortex back into our, uh, our DAW so that we can now put our impulse response and, uh, then we can listen to all this stuff on our monitors and uh you know we've got the tone that we want uh with where we're only capturing the part of the tone that we want okay so that's that um let's get started all right so uh let's just go through the signal chain um the di is coming in here it's actually coming in through the input um, I'm using my vocal is using uh, channel one right now. So this is why we're kind of, you know, I don't have an input coming in here, but I do have my, uh, my loops. So we'll just go with that. Um, but the loops are being sent immediately without any effects. They're being sent directly into return one of uh, the quad cortex. And then outcomes uh, from send one outcomes pretty much the exact same signal but this is also where the capture signal uh, begins so the capture signal starts here and it's going to go through a uh, little bit of equalization and uh, this uh, it's uh, pretty much an overdrive uh, the clan centaur uh, by nambrini this is a free effect um, and then here, tell you what, let's, I'm going to play some music and then we can listen to that and I'll turn these on and off and you can kind of hear what's going on. So the equalization, not too much going on here, just a little, little bit of shaping, but uh, check it out. Just trying to tighten it up a little bit, you know, make it sound a little, uh, little uh, less muddy. So that's what that's for. Um, same thing, pretty much with the uh, Minotaur here. Check this out. Adding a little bit of gain too. All right, so that heads into our pedal, which is right here. Um, I've got two channels that I'm gonna sample today. I, I made two different sounds. So I got this one and then I got this other one. 
it's a little drier, a little, uh, you know, mid-heavy, which is surprising. That, that's this channel here. The upper channel, which is supposed to be the rhythm, uh, to me this sounds a little bit more like a lead channel, more, more mids in it. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm doing with my hardware. Um, I don't want to really mess with anything there because I'm already kind of prepared with what I got before the uh, video started. All right, so next step is the, uh, let's turn that off. Next step is my power amp. Uh, this is by Nalex. This thing's free, so uh, you can grab it off of his blog. Um, pretty good stuff. Listen to the difference. So I think that makes a huge difference in the capture. That's going to sound a lot more like an amplifier than just a uh, pedal. Uh, next up is some saturation. Uh, actually added a little bit more bass into this uh, and then just kind of pick different spots. More or less, this is an overall saturating everything kind of thing. Uh, but check it out. So not a huge difference, but to me, it sounds a little crunchier, uh, tightens things up, makes it a little more exciting uh, sounding. Uh, and last, I have this uh, EQ to pull out some of this bass. Check this out. It just makes the whole thing sound a whole lot uh, gnarlier and uh, less flubby. If you're playing this live, if you're playing through like uh, you know a PA system or your own setup, you're gonna lose a lot of volume with uh, this extra bass that I don't think is needed. Uh, it's just gonna eat up all your headroom. So I cut that out, and then the rest of this stuff. It's mostly tone shaping, uh, and then some. Uh, you know, frequency dipping to kind of get rid of some of the harshness here. Check this out. Yeah, that's much better in my opinion. All right. So that is the tone. Um, you can see why I put effects before and after how that has, uh, you know, different, uh, it causes different reactions within the hardware itself. And then, of course, the hardware is what it is, but there's a reason why I'm doing two stages here. So now we are going to do our capture. Um, not going to spend too much time talking about the gain staging here because I'm going to do another video uh, pretty soon, probably right after this one, to be honest. Uh, but I'm going to explain all of the ins and outs of the gain stage. I'm just going to get through kind of the, the concept here so that people see what's going on. So, uh, yeah, let's make some captures. This is going to be the, uh, the lead channel. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so let's see how this, uh, sounds. All right, not bad. Uh, so I'm gonna save this down. Okay, and now let's do uh, the other channel. Okay, uh, so let's hear uh, number two. good all right hold on one second okay so here we are with this uh preset that i've got uh i'm gonna make the uh i'll put the link in the bottom the idea with this preset now is that you can leave all of your wires hooked up exactly as they were and you can A, B between your captures and the hardware DAW setup that you've got. 
Uh, this is why I used send one out of the quad cortex to send the capture signal because this little dude, uh, the, uh, the send that's happening right here is sending out of uh, send one. So uh, let's A, B between these and uh, listen to uh, what we got. So we're on, where are we on? We're on the rhythm channel. So we'll just do that one. Here we go. This is, again, this is the hardware and DAW. And then I'll switch over to the capture that we just made. And then now I'm going to swap over to the, uh, let's go to the other, the lead channel. And then we'll get the, this guy event screen. Okay. And then let's listen to that. And then here's the hardware. So yeah, not bad. Uh, this is pretty much the end of this video because I don't want to ramble too long on this. Basic principle here, um, you just got to hook up everything and leave it with this uh, preset. And then the the philosophy of doing these plugins before the pedal and then some more plugins after the pedal is just to make it sound as awesome as possible. Um, and then I exclude the impulse response. I leave that for last outside of the uh, signal chain here, uh, going in and out and in and out and in and out on the, uh, on the quad cortex because I don't want this to be part of the capture. But I have this here because when you're on... Eh, hold on. When you're on this screen right here, there's no impulse response for you to listen to. So when you're tweaking your tones, it's kind of difficult. You can't really do that. I wish they would add an impulse response that you could load, you know, on this page, you know, like just like put an extra impulse response here, guys, please. Um, and then make it so that it's not part of the capture. That would be awesome uh, for people who aren't doing this crazy elaborate setup that I'm doing. So the reason it's half of the reason why I'm, I started doing this and then I just started adding the plugins and it just got weirder from there. So yeah. All right. Uh, that's pretty much it. I uh, just hope that uh, people can understand what I'm doing here. And I hope that they take some inspiration from this and try to experiment on their own. And uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, you know, chat me here, like leave a comment in, on the video find me uh, wherever you can find me and I'm happy to answer questions, happy to work through some stuff with you. So uh, yeah, I hope this was uh, helpful and uh, yeah, cool. Take it easy guys. Have a good one. Oh yeah. I'm going to also do another video. I think I already said that I'm going to do another video where I talk about all the gain staging and all the uh, stuff that goes on to uh, make these captures uh, more and more reliable. I see people talking about low gain stuff and, you know, just sounding different and whatever. I'm going to go through my process uh, on the next video there to kind of show you how gain staging works when you're going, you know, back and forth so many times. Uh, you know, that can get confusing as far as uh, how all this stuff should run. Okay, cool. See you later. Take care.